Welcome back everyone. My name is Caleb. My wife and I have gotten full-time furniture flipping here in Austin, Texas, transforming random pieces of furniture we find into something truly spectacular. Today we've got a pretty extreme flip. We're going to be removing seven layers of latex paint and working on some rotting wood. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going to start off by working on the drawers. First thing we're going to do is remove all of the drawers from the piece. While we were taking them out, we realized that some of them were in worse shape than we thought. So we separated them into two piles, one pile that was ready to go and another pile that needed wood glue and some clamps. Next up we're going to remove those handles from the drawers. Whoever was the previous owner of this piece couldn't be bothered to remove the handles before painting, which is kind of unfortunate for us because they were a pain to get off and at this point they were mainly held on by the latex paint instead of the screws. Looking at the back of one of the handles, you can actually see all of the different layers of paint that the previous owner had painted onto this piece. Once all of the handles were removed, we cut through any grease and gunk that was on the drawer fronts with our go-to simple green. For these busted up drawers, we brought out the mustard container and glued down any broken off pieces back onto those drawers. Some of the dovetails were a bit warped so we had to brute force them into place before clamping them down and waiting 30 minutes for that wood glue to dry. In today's video, we'll be trying out QCS Stripper for the first time. After watching this video, I have a feeling you're going to want to try it out yourself. So if you're interested, head over to stripwell.com and use code COWBOY to save 10% off at checkout. The first step in using this stripper is to lightly coat whatever you're working on. As you can see here, the stripper was coming out in more of a stream rather than a mist, which makes it harder for us to lightly coat the entire surface. In a little bit, you'll see us switch over to another bottle just to make this process easier. So here's how it looks after the first pass, and as you can see, even though it's not evenly covered throughout the whole drawer, you can already see that paint starting to seize up, which is exactly what you want. We keep coming back to make sure the surface is wet, and in about two hours, we start on our first attempt to scrape off that paint. Some parts were easy and some parts were hard, so we'll just have to reapply some more of that QCS on the parts that didn't come off so easily. On our second application, we did the same thing again, sprayed the surface, and then scraped afterwards. This time around, we had more success with scraping it off and we could tell we were getting closer to bare wood. I do want to take a second to say that we've tried, at this point, citrus strip, clean strip, aircraft stripper, and none of those have worked as well as this, so we're already super impressed with how this is knocking out seven layers of paint. Mm -hmm. 
Moving on to our third application, this time we poured a little bit of QCS into a cup and used some steel wool to get off the rest of that gunk. It's very important to re-dip the steel wool anytime things feel like they're getting dry. As you can see, not all the drawers were on the same page. Some needed a bit more QCS and scraping before they were ready to be scrubbed. I don't know about you guys, but this is literally my favorite thing to watch. When you're scrubbing with the steel wool, you can kind of feel the texture become different and that's your sign that you're hitting bare wood and you're almost done. Once you're at this point right here, all you have left to do is wipe off any excess QCS with a paper towel. Normally if I were using any toxic strippers, I would have to go in with mineral spirits to clean up any excess. Thankfully QCS is an afterwash so there won't be any textural changes on the drawer fronts. Four of the drawers had these pesky dividers, so we went in with a bit more QCS to soften it up, that way we could scrape it out later. Whatever couldn't be scraped off, we used a steel brush to remove the gunk. Once all the drawer fronts were nice and bare, we sanded off the sides to match the fronts. With everything looking nice and perfect, we move right along to pre-staining. So moving on to the other drawers that we won't be stripping, we're starting off with a carbide scraper to get rid of some drip marks and make things as level as we can. Once we finished scraping, we went in with 220 grit sandpaper and our orbital sander to really even things out. There were some parts of the drawer fronts that were badly damaged, so we went in with some all-purpose bondo to build those parts back up. This particular corner was so badly damaged that we had to tape things up so we could really recreate that corner with the Bondo. Once those have dried, we sand them smooth.
Bondo is awesome for building stuff back up, but to make things really smooth and seamless, we follow it up with some wood filler. That's about it for the drawers, now we move on to the body. Just like we did for the drawers, we're going to start off by cleaning it up using simple green. This piece was really old and full of cobwebs and spider egg sacs, so we're just going to vacuum all those out with our new shop vac. Next, we move on to removing these little bumpers from the bottom. This bottom corner is badly rotted and the nail from the backing was getting in our way. So we go ahead and remove that nail to prepare for repairing. Say that three times fast. On top of the rotting corner, water damage has also caused this entire area to swell up, so we're going to go in and sand that down as much as we can. Next, we move right along to removing this entire back panel. Once that was out of the way, we could really get in there and tidy up that corner. Just like we did for those drawers, we're going to be building up these corners with that all-purpose bondo. Since it's a big chunk missing here, it did take us about three applications to get things built back up to that perfect shape. Once that dries, we go in with a 220 grit on our orbital sander. With the corners reconstructed, we reattached that piece of backing using new nails. Moving on to creating a new base for this piece, the first thing we're going to do is make sure the sides are the same length. We're going to do that on our miter saw. Next up, we flip the piece upside down, lay those pieces of wood out, and create some pocket holes. Drilling pocket holes creates a lot of dust, so we go in with our vacuum to suck that all out. Next, we move on to attaching the longer front beam first. All we did to lock that down was use one of those Craig screws on each side of the piece and then one in the center. With that locked down, we can screw in those side pieces and lock those down as well. Since 
there's a slight gap between the new structure we created and the body of the piece, we go in with some wood filler just to close that up. Moving right along to scuff sanding the body of the piece, we start off with a 220 grit on our orbital sander before finishing up with a 400 grit. We also take this time to go in and sand down any wood filled spots. Because some of these front pieces were curved, we switched over to our Diablo sanding block to get into some of those grooves more easily. As we were sanding things smooth, we noticed more gaps on the piece, so we touched those up with some wood filler. Once we're done with repairs and prep work, we move right on to painting. We're starting off on these weird drawer fronts. We're going to be using frog tape to tape up the sides of that weird divide in the middle. We'll be painting that stripe in the color Noir by Good Bones Paint. We knew we wanted to lighten up these drawer fronts, and so we went in at first with Pickled Oak by Minwax. As you can see here, it doesn't really do anything, so we immediately grabbed some QCS and wiped it right off. Since the stain didn't work, we're going to be moving on to paint washing it using the same color we'll be using for the body of the piece. We'll be using a paint water ratio of 1 to 2. Once we got the ratio down, we moved right on to brushing it onto the drawer fronts. At first, we were wiping after every coat, but after the first two applications, we noticed it wasn't lightening up as much as we needed it to, so we did about three more thin coats without wiping in between. Since we resorted to paint washing those drawers, we ended up covering up some of that noir on that center stripe, so we had to retape and repaint it again. Once we were done with those drawers, we moved on to painting the top half of the body in the color Coyote by Good Bones Paint. Thank you. 
Here you'll see that we wrongly assumed that the top was nice and flat and smooth, so we had to go in with some wood filler to flatten all those rough areas out. This was a lot of work. We also noticed a little gap between the top and the sides, so we went in with some caulk to close up that gap. On top of that, we also noticed this piece here was broken off, so we had to go in with some wood glue and clamp that back into place. Once that glue was dry, it still looked terrible, so we covered it up with some wood filler. <laughs> Going through this, I just can't believe we did this. I just can't believe that we bought this piece. <laughs> it's in so it was so bad. It's in such bad shape. But anyways, my wife or <laughs> my wife or quality control, as I like to call her, noticed a couple more spots. <laughs> noticed a couple more spots on the top. <laughs> and by the end of it, we basically wood filled the entire top. Once everything was finally smooth and level, we went in with a microfiber cloth to remove any excess dust from sanding before painting. At this point, I could tell things were really nice and smooth, but unfortunately after that next coat, some wood tannin started bleeding through, so we went in with some Bin Shellac Primer to cover those up. While we wait for that to dry, we're going to go ahead and create that separation from top to bottom with our frog tape so we can create that dipped look. I followed the frog tape up with some masking paper just to ensure that no overspray would end up on that coyote color. Once the shellac on the top was dried, we did our final coat of coyote. We really wanted to avoid that wood tannin issue we encountered on the top with this bottom section, so I preemptively went in with some shellac on any areas that I thought would be a problem. Once the shellac was dried, we went in with the color Noir by Good Bones Paint. I've been saying this a lot, but I can't stress it enough, this color by Good Bones Paint is the best black I've ever seen and we actually only needed one coat of paint for this entire bottom section. For the bottom three drawers, which we'll be painting, we went in with our masking system to ensure there wouldn't be any overspray on the inside or the outside of those drawers. Once everything was all taped up, we went in with that single coat of Noir. Once everything was dried, we removed that frog tape to reveal a nice crisp line. To seal this piece, we'll be using three coats of Matte Polyurethane by Bear. The 
body and the drawers are pretty much done at this point, so we're moving on to hardware. The first thing we did to loosen up that paint was spray on some QCS to the handles. After that first coat of QCS, I scrubbed off as much paint as I could from those handles. We weren't really happy with how that method was working for us, so I actually reached out to Gary from Stripwell, who suggested we submerge all of the handles into QCS. After leaving those handles in the solution overnight, it was way easier to scrub them off. It took about two rounds of scrubbing to really get down to bare metal Once it was fully stripped, we rinsed it off with some water and let it air dry before painting. We usually spray our black handles in Farmhouse Black by Rust-Oleum, but our local Home Depot has stopped selling Rust-Oleum spray paint and they've switched over to Bear, so today we used Matte Black by Bear and honestly we weren't a huge fan of it. The color was great, but the coverage was pretty terrible, so we did about four coats of it on these handles. Same thing for these legs, it felt like coat after coat there was still some gold peeking through. Anyway, once those were fully covered, we went in and sealed all those up with Rust-Oleum clear glass sealer. Once that's all out of the way, we move on to assembling the piece, and the first thing we do is vacuum out all of those drawers to make sure there's no stray dust in there. After that, we move right along to attaching those drawer pulls. This piece was actually missing a couple of knobs for those side drawers, but thankfully we were able to repurpose some other knobs that we had. In order for it to work though, we had to use some washers so that it would be a tight fit. After all those drawer pulls were attached, we removed the drawers and vacuumed the piece out one last time. Moving right along to the legs, we're going to start off by creating some pilot holes. Afterwards, we screwed those legs right into place. finished off this piece by using some feed and wax on the inside of each drawer and buffing it out. All that's left is to move our piece over to our other garage and onto our staging area. Leaves somehow always manage to find their way into our garage, but we swept those right out of the way and got our piece into place. We haven't sold this piece yet, but when we do, we'll definitely let you guys know how much we sold it for down below in the comments. All in all, this piece was really not as much about the profit for us as it was about challenging ourselves 
to transform a dresser that was in really bad shape into something beautiful that can be used once again. Thank you guys so much for following along on this video. I know this was a longer one. I hope you guys enjoyed it and we seriously could not have pulled this off without the help of QCS Stripper. This is not sponsored and we're not paid by Stripwell. We just genuinely love their product, so if you guys want to get a hold of it and try it out yourselves, don't forget to use code COWBOY at checkout to save 10% off. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.